It's always interesting to think about the beginning of this mobile art thing. You know, you can talk about the initial footprint of the advent of the tools that we now use to make this stuff mobile and how it impacted the art scene as well as the tech scene. And, you know, at the beginning, it was interesting to see creators kind of accept what the standards were and maybe kind of toe the line a little bit. And then you had some people who subverted stuff here and there. And then you had that crowd of people that just weren't on board and weren't ready for those standards to evolve as much as they did. And honestly, those people probably still aren't. Hello, hello everyone. I am Cued and welcome to the first entry in the Mobile Visual Sound Journal where I'll basically be documenting my editing process as I create photos, videos, and music all mobile. And I'll be honest, I don't really have much of a structure for, for this series or for this particular episode at all. So we're just gonna kind of go gung-ho with editing a photo that I shot on the Lumix GX85, which is the camera that I'm filming with right now. Most people know me as the mobile only guy, which is precisely why I'm doing this. I thought it'd be cool to kind of step out of my own comfort zone and work with an image from a camera that I don't normally shoot images with since I primarily shoot all with an iPhone. And then I'm going to be merging it with apps that I'm editing on on the iPhone. Then I'll be color grading on the iPad. So that's three degrees of separation, which will just make for an interesting way to maybe get people more comfortable with the idea of editing mobile and show people how a mobile editing process can really boost a workflow. The first step is masking, which is what I've been doing in the previous clips. Masking allows me to erase and conceal elements from an image I don't want to be visible, which is the background in this case. Here I have access to different eraser brushes and even tools you'd see in a computer editing program like the Polygon Lasso, which lets me make a custom selection path to erase. Masking is easily the longest and most tedious portion of this process, but it's almost become a weird form of meditation for me. <laughs> it kind of gets me super zen, and it's a fun challenge to essentially draw over the image to pull someone deeper into the illusion that's being created. Normally it takes a minute to figure out what I'm going to do with an edit, but with this one, I have a particular idea in mind where I basically want to base this on another edit that I did where I disconnected from server and then I kind of took a break from Instagram for a minute. Here I kind of want to make it look like I'm reconnecting to that server. So I'm going to put this figure that I'm masking right now of me in the sky and then I'm going to kind of add holograms and make it look like I'm floating on some holographic bed, which will then be the server. Transforming elements like these sky photos I shot on iPhone to create the background is the second key part of the process, and this is where I can start to see the idea in my head take a more solid shape. Now I have to tweak the brightness of my figure as this will really help the elements complement each other better. If even one element is off, it's gonna take the viewer out of this and remind them that surprise, this is fake, and that's really not the point. It's supposed to be escapism for others and especially for myself. If I can't succeed at that, well, I'm just wasting time. Now that I have my outlined image placed, I'm adding a bit of my secret sauce to create those holograms. Going into my layer panel now to see how it all looks when it's assembled. Yeah, not bad. Okay, the designs overlapping with my hand are gonna bug me, so I need to change that. I'm gonna grab a radial gradient tool, and since my layer is a screen layer, I can just use a black color to get rid of what I don't want. Also, I mentioned masking earlier, but frankly, what I'm doing is a more destructive editing approach. You're technically supposed to create an actual layer mask, but I never got into that habit. And honestly, I get a rush from editing destructively. It also forces the perfectionist in me to accept my creative decisions and refrain from going back and forth just to end up at what would probably be the same conclusion. So after making some adjustments to my hair with the wet paint tool, I get to one of my favorite parts, which is adding effects. Then to color grade in Visco, which is the app everyone uses for this, so I don't really have to say much. Anyone can use it and add a preset, but what's always impressive to me is when people use this app to accentuate and create their own style, which might be achieved using the various adjustment tools and will also be shaped by the original image being worked with in the first place. Creating a singular style with a tool so commonly used, I mean, it just adds such a unique flair to the work.
So that wraps up my iPhone photo editing process in a nutshell. And I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully provided some value to you. It definitely taught me a few things. The first and most paramount being don't record narrations while trying to do an edit breakdown. It's just not gonna work, do it in post. So I'm learning and I'm still trying to get my footing with this and it's a bit nerve wracking kind of putting my whole process on display like this, but it's fun and I'm excited to do more of these and I hope to see you next time.